Got another budget e-bike for you today. This is a fat tire bike from Veribus. It's called the Chubby 2. Welcome back. I'm Tony and yeah, I love my PEVs, personal electric vehicles. It's it's just so much fun and so freeing, you know? And while I love my electric skateboards, a nice electric bike is a good thing to have. But like most electric vehicles, electric bikes are not cheap. And that's one of the things that got my attention with this Viribus, or is it Viribus? Anyways, the Chevy 2. The price point on this is only $849. Yeah, you heard that right, $849. Compared to most fat tire e-bikes, they're gonna be between $1,200 and $2,000 or more. So the Chevy 2 Fat Tire e-bike is a 500 watt peak 1000 watt class 2 bike. It does pedal assist or throttle and you can set it for either 3 or 5 levels for pedal assist. When you receive it, it'll have 3 levels of pedal assist and if you want to, you can actually go into the menu on the display thing on the controller and you can change it to 5 levels. That does not add any speed, it just gives you more incremental speed in the levels. Max speed on this bike is 20 miles per hour. It has a 36 volt 13 amp hour removable battery. The claimed range on it is up to 50 miles and in total I've ridden at 40 miles the battery needs to be charged at this point so you have to remember weight terrain and other factors like wind will affect your range you know so if you're a heavier rider you're going to get less range out of it a lot of hills or a lot of wind coming at you that will reduce your range but I will say having fat tires like this is perfect for me on the Outer Banks of North Carolina because it's a beach community we've got sand everywhere and it's just, the fat tires are perfect for this they're saying the weight capacity is up to 310 pounds you know if you're over 250 pounds pounds it is definitely going to affect it so yeah take that with a grain of salt the frame is sturdy and they say it's the ideal fit for riders at the bottom end of the recommended height range now i'm 5'9 and usually wear a 30 inseam so when i sit on this bike i have the seat pretty much all the way down my feet will touch but i can't put them flat on their site they got a big thing about safety engineered to put safety first every bike gets a 50 point inspection and screws are double checked i don't care what company is sending you uh, any of these personal electric vehicles always check every bolt and nut on that bike it has 160 millimeter front and rear disc brakes and they work great but this is the first e-bike that i've ever put together where i had to actually put the front caliper on they're usually already on the forks which when i do that lightning unboxing here in a minute you're going to see that i actually put the handlebars on with the forks backwards and I went all the way through the process even put the calipers on and everything and then I was like wait a minute and this doesn't look right and I had to end up taking the, everything apart and putting it all around turning it around and putting it back together so when you watch that unboxing you'll be like dude your forks are backwards well yeah I, I figured that out but I will say that assembling this bike you're going to need a little bit of bike knowledge it has Shimano 3 and 7 speed there are three gears in the front and seven in the back and the cable on the front hung out and hit the pedals it was a quick fix I just bent it and I'll probably end up cutting that and recapping it it has a nice high lumen headlight and it even has a horn I've never had an electric bike that came with a horn so that's kind of cool on the battery they claim 30 percent longer range compared to similar bikes and you can charge it in under four hours i'd say that charge time is accurate i'll just say this if you've been searching for electric bikes especially fat tire bikes like this 849 dollars it's much less than most of them in the class and it's sort of rare so shortcomings they're kind of overcomable definitely not deal breakers and it should be easy enough to modify and not too expensive to do so in order to get that price of 849 they use some no-name brands and stuff like that so like the handlebars you may want to switch them out because well you'll just see in the video here in just a minute matter of fact let's go ahead and do that lightning unboxing then we're going to take it out for a couple of rides and give you some ride and talk and then we'll come back and wrap it all up
the first ride, I was like, I don't know how bright this is gonna be in here. I actually did go through and adjust the display so that it was as bright as possible. So let's see, we got our horn. We've got lights. Go ahead and leave those off. Got a full battery and we're in pedal assist one. Hit that throttle. Ooh, that feels pretty good. So I can already tell you that this is a uh, lean forward type bike. I gotta learn how to use these. So pedal assist is on and it kicks in right away. That's pedal assist one. It's got a good amount of thrust when you actually engage it. There we go. Now let's take it up to pedal assist two. Ooh, all right. When that kicks in, it really kicks in. And three, woo, all right. All right, so the pedal assist on this thing works pretty darn good. Look, they're just gonna take it down here. You know, and these brakes aren't all squeaky like they usually are on these bikes, so the brakes are really nice. You still probably wanna go ahead and set them in, so I'll do that. But yeah, I'm not as familiar with this Shimano shifting system, so I'm gonna have to figure this out. This one, I guess you just go up and down, right? You got an arrow up and down, and this one here, well, let's get moving so that we can try it out. Boy, when that pedal assist kicks in, it really does. Throttle feels real good as well. And the throttle is topping out at 19 miles per hour, which the claimed speed is 20, so it's pretty good. I'm a 195 pound rider, so I'm not hating that at all. I'll take that pedal assist down to one so that I can figure out the shifting on this okay so that's plus oh okay so you're just using this lever over here to uh, go down and then to go up you're just using the plus button on that now those are for the back gears and the one that's over here is for the front gears. Well, it's a real comfy ride. So as a first ride, that is not too bad at all. Okay, just a couple of observations I've made after a few days riding this. See this handlebar, it's nice and long. I mean, it's about the right size. It's standard size for a handle grip. This side is much shorter because you've got your display on here and my hand, it just barely fits on there. And, you know, I can deal with it, but it's something I thought I should point out. The next thing for me that I want to point out is the fenders on here. That back fender is attached to the seat post and the whole bracket is plastic and the teeth that are what secure it in its position. Well, I have a feeling they're going to wear out after a while. So that could be an issue. I'm probably gonna end up taking both fenders off because even the front fender, it's difficult to get it all the way tightened. Well, if you don't, what happens is it slides down and ends up touching the tire. So I have them on right now. And granted, I've been going over speed bumps and there's quite a bit of bumps in my area, but you know, there might be a better fender solution. And I'm sure I could find something that would work for this or I just go fenderless. I mean, you know. And one other thing, the seat on this, I mean, it's got plenty of cushion on it. It's just not the most comfortable seat. You know, I mean, it's just one of those things. People often replace their seats on their bike, so not that big of a deal. Now, if you look at the display, it's got your miles per hour right there, and then it's got your pedal assist level right there. 
And then this number right here can change, right? So we're gonna hit the button and we got 1.9. That's the distance that I've gone just since I turned the bike on the last time I turned it on. Uh, let's see, and then 37.2. I think that is the voltage of the battery. And then odometer, 7.8 miles total. Aside from the seat thing, it is a comfortable ride. And if you look at that display, whether it's dark or not, I've got it all the way up on the brightness, but being LCD or liquid crystal display like that, even in the sun, it's still nice and bright and I can see everything easily. And I can pedal if I want to, or just use the throttle. So that's always good. And a ride like this, oh man, come on, this is nice. You know, I also really like that you've got your headlight control right here and your horn, which I don't think I've had an electric bike yet that came with a horn. I mean, you can get them, but I don't think I've had one. That's kind of nice, especially because I live at the beach. Never know who's going to be walking in front of you and you're like, to your left, to your left, hey! Yeah, so there we go. Something that I didn't mention earlier, the front forks have suspension. Yeah, they've got shocks on them, so that's nice. It does keep the ride really good. And of course, with the fat tires, it's always gonna be a little bit more comfortable ride. You know, the handlebars, they do cause you to ride bent over. Some bikes will have a little bit of a curve to the handlebars, kind of more like a mountain bike or something, but these are just straight. So that might be one of the things that you'd replace, especially because you've got that short grip over here. Just make sure your handlebars are long enough to push all the, you know, the controller and everything over. The way it is now, this hand for me, I mean, you know, I don't have the biggest hands in the world and I'm just always at the edge of that grip. That's, uh, that's, that's kind of a gripe for me. But overall, this is a nice budget bike. It doesn't have too many bells and whistles. There is no app that you can use with it. The display isn't a big color display with tons of different information on there, which some people get confused by. Sometimes the simpler the controller is, the better. And if that's you, this controller is for you. There are some hidden settings on this bike. You can't make it go faster than 20 miles per hour, but what you can do is go in there and change the pedal assist from three levels to five levels. There's There, there are some other settings that you can change if you're really want to dig in and do that. But in general, the display has everything you're going to need on it. The pedal assist on this is actually really fun. Sometimes I, I get a pedal assist bike and I, I just don't use it. I'm using the throttle most of the time, but on this one, it's actually fun. And when you kick in with that pedal assist, it's like, it really goes. So it's nice. And of course, having 10 gears, seven in the back, three in the front, you can adjust it and really dial it in. So your pedal assist is perfect. You know, I will say the 500 watt motor, you know, the more high end bikes, the ones that are going to cost you 1200 to $2,000, those sometimes have a 750 watt motor on them, and this is a 500 watt motor, so you're gonna feel it on hills. It, it does slow down quite a bit, whether you're doing pedal assist or the throttle. Uh, on throttle, I'm getting like, you know, eight, maybe 10 miles per hour up a hill. But again, if you use this like a bike bike and you're going up a hill with the pedal assist on, it's just gonna make going up those hills a lot easier. You can actually pedal up the hill real easy. I'm gonna be taking those fenders off. They look kind of cool, but they're really flexible, and you know, sometimes they bounce and hit the tire. The back one, the little teeth, because you got two little knobs that adjust, you know, the angle of it. The little teeth that are on there are plastic, and I'm sure that those are going to end up getting stripped out. I've had it fall down a few times and, you know, bounce off the tire, and actually I had to get off the bike and readjust it, so I'm just going to take them off. A lot of bikes don't even have fenders on them, so that's fine with me. Oh, and the front one, it's really difficult to get that thing tightened enough. I mean, it's on there, but after I've been through some bumps and, you know, speed bumps and things like that, it vibrated its way down and hit the tire. So I'm like, okay, that's probably got to go too. Oh, and in the unboxing, I showed a little light. The little light is kind of cool. It's got two lasers on it. So if you were using that, it would shine lasers down on the ground behind you. But the problem is only one laser worked and there's a little cuff that goes around the seat post. It was too large and th there was a little shim thing that came with it, but it wasn't enough to make it small enough. So you know what? I, I can do without that too. So there's a lot of good in this bike for $849. Not a whole lot of bad. And the things that are like, eh, you know, I, whatever, the light, not a big deal. The fenders, you know, do we need fenders? Or if you do, I'm sure you can find another solution with a bike shop or something. Handlebars are pretty inexpensive, probably under 50 bucks to replace those. If you're on a budget, if you're a college student, if you're not really sure you're gonna love e-bikes and you, you won't ride it all the time, or for whatever reason, those $1,200 to $2,000 bikes are just not for you, 
this one might be. We had super fast shipping, came from a US warehouse, which is good, because a lot of times you order these bikes and they come from China and it takes up to two months to get to you. So if you need it fast, that's a good thing. And their customer service is based in the US, so you probably get really fast service if you need it. Virabus or Virabus, maybe it's Virabus. I don't know, either way, it's, they have a bunch of different bikes. They've got trikes on there, they've got foldable fat tires, they've got all kinds of different bikes. So I'll put a link down in the description so you can check them out. I don't think I have a discount code. I'm gonna look in my email and see if there is one. If so, I'll put that down there as well. So that is the Chevy 2 Fat Tire Electric Bike. I want to thank you so much for your support here on the channel. It's been around since 2013. I've uh, done a lot of different stuff on this channel in the last couple of years. Been very, very interested in uh, personal electric vehicles, e-mobility, whatever you want to call it, electric skateboards, bikes, scooters. But I'm also big into guitars. I just got a custom Kiesel guitar and I just ordered today an Angle Fireball 25 amp. If you're into guitars, you probably know what that is and I cannot wait to get that. So I'll have more guitar content on here soon. Got solar power, solar generators, all that kind of stuff. If you haven't checked out the other content on the channel, I encourage you to do so. Your support means the world to me. If you want to thank the channel monetarily, we do have a thanks button down there. If you click that, you can send a monetary donation. It's not inexpensive to run one of these channels, all the lights, cameras, and microphones, and everything else, so yeah. But the easiest way to support me is if you like what you see, give this video a like, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, there is a red subscribe button down there. If you click that and the notification bell, you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. We'll catch you next time on the Vapor Trail Channel.